Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and today I have a bit of a fun video for you. So it's recently come to my attention that you could kind of call me a video game collector. I mean, my shelves keep getting more and more full, I have to keep buying new ones, and the space keeps filling up, and there's really no end in sight. So deep down, I have to admit, yes, I am a video game collector. Not that there's anything bad about that. Personally, I just see it as kind of like a nicer way of calling myself a hoarder. No, I'm not a hoarder, I'm a collector. And so while realizing this, I realized as well that there were a lot of things about being a collector and the hobby of collecting video games that are kind of annoying, kind of frustrating, and that there's not really anyone to talk about with because nobody really also has this hobby in my life so nobody really connects with. And I thought, you know, why not do kind of like a short, quick, fun little video all about my pet peeves when it comes to being a video game collector and video game collecting in general. And maybe some of you out there who are watching this are also video game collectors and we can kind of, you know, have a one-to-one -one and kind of resonate and connect over this and maybe you have other things that I didn't think of that also annoy the crap out of you. But this is just a fun, quick little video that I thought would be, you know, just enjoyable to do and very cathartic. So without much further ado, here are my top five pet peeves when it comes to video game collecting. Number five, missing manuals. So this is one that happens more often than you would think. You buy a game either at a game shop or maybe off of eBay or at, you're at a convention and you don't think to check. But then when you open it up, when you get home, boom, there's no manual. And this one can be particularly frustrating if you like going for complete inbox kind of collections. And most of us, when it comes to collecting disc-based games, we want the manuals in there, right? They might not do anything. We might might never look at them, but we want to get them. And when the games are missing manuals, especially when you weren't aware of this, it becomes so incredibly frustrating. And I don't know about you guys, but hunting down the manuals through things like conventions and eBay is very tedious and in a lot of ways a fruitless effort. I mean, I've got two games on my shelf. I'll show you them right here. Bioshock Infinite and Cabela's Big Game Hunters for the Wii, where I don't think I'll ever ever find the manuals and I've been looking for over a year. This is one of those things that's just super annoying, very frustrating and the worst part is it's the kind of thing that you just you forget about. You don't think to check and then boom you get home and guess what your collection it's no longer complete. Number four, cleaning cartridges. So if you collect for any of the cartridge based systems this is something that you have to do on a regular basis. You got to break out the alcohol or the Windex or the Brasso. No, don't use Brasso. Don't do Brasso. But you got to break out the Q-tips or the one-up cards and your cleaning agent and you got to clean your cartridges regularly. And this can get really frustrating especially when you just want to play a game right now and you plug it in and then you get like this glitchy NES screen or just it will not boot up whatsoever and then you got to you know work in there with the Q-tip try it again still doesn't work try again doesn't work. And this can get super frustrating especially when the last time you played the game it worked fine. So it's like what happened between when I pulled this out and I put this back in. I've had games stop working in the space of literally five minutes. Like this one can get very, very annoying. And if you're a retro game collector, I guarantee you, or even if you've just even played retro games, I guarantee you've run into this one. I mean, it almost makes you want to start using emulators. Not quite, but I mean, this is one of the things that can get you there. Number three, fake games. Now this is one of those things that you don't really care about until it gets you, until you get hit by it. There are a lot of fake games or reproductions out there in the market and most of them look a lot like the real games and generally speaking most people are fine with the reproductions and I'm fine as long as you're aware of what you're buying which is pretty much a valueless thing made in China as opposed to you know a real game which has actual value and if you want to collect reproductions it's fine some of the more expensive games I mean it's a way to play them without having to buy you know like a $200 cartridge the thing that gets on my nerves though is when people don't realize that they're selling reproductions and they sell you one or if they try and get it past you the fact that they're selling a fake game because this will happen a lot on eBay where somebody will just not say that it's authentic or they'll claim it is and then you get it and actually it's fake I'm lucky I've only ever gotten two fake games one was part of a video game lot and the other I bought intentionally but I know a lot of people who have had this happen tons of times and it's very frustrating and I hate when I 
go to a retro game shop and I see a fake game on the shelf. It's like, that's fake. Why are you selling that? Do your research, people. Number two, stickers on games and game cases. Now, this is one where if you're a collector or even if you just own older video games, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And Blockbuster, I'm looking at you. This might not have been the reason you went out of business, but I'm glad you did because you did this so much and it's so annoying. A lot of the times, older games that you'll buy are gonna have stickers on them. Sometimes just on the cartridge, sometimes just on the DVD case. If you're really unlucky on the label of a cartridge, and this gets so annoying. Especially if you want your games to look nice and clean, you're gonna have to go and remove all these, and some of them, no matter what you do, they just do not want to come off. If you have this problem, by the way, I recommend Gugon. It's probably the best and safest way to do it, but some stickers just do not want to come off. And what's even worse is if you have a sticker on the label, because usually getting that off will in some way trash the label. If you're super unlucky, it'll rip off a piece like this game here that I bought for a dollar. The reason why I only sold for a dollar is because part of the label was ripped off and you can tell it was because there was a sticker on there. Sometimes you can get it off, but it's going to kind of rough up or discolor the label. Overall, I just hate stickers on games. I don't see why people had to do this. And I mean, if you have to put a sticker on the game case, make sure it's not on any label and make sure it's that it's low adhesive so you can get it off and it's not going to leave any residue. I mean, seriously, people, it's 2018. Stop doing this. And finally, my number one pet peeve when it comes to game collecting, and this is one that I'm sure is really going to hit you in the feels if you also collect games. Wrong sized or oddly sized game cases. And now most of us collectors, we have kind of like a little bit of an OCD thing when it comes to it. You know, we want all our games lined up. We want them all to look nice and clean and shiny. Sometimes we'll put them in alphabetical order or by series or whatever. And there's nothing that annoys me more than a game case that is the wrong size for the system. For example, up here, I can show you my GameCube collection where I have the Game Boy Player Disc, which is a tiny box, even smaller than like a Switch game. And it just does not fit fit with the rest of the GameCube games. This one though I'm okay with because it's not a game, it's fine. But down here, I have my collector's edition of Dragon Age Origins, which is the same size as a regular DVD case. This is a PS3 game. PS3 cases are mini, they're like Blu-ray cases. So this thing doesn't fit. And I have an entire shelf devoted to PS3 games, and I can't put this on the shelf because it's too big. It's so annoying. Why didn't you just make your steel case the same size as all the other cases? Why did it have to be big? Why did it have to be special? I don't understand. This was actually almost like a therapeutic video for me to do because finally I can rant about this stuff in a format where it's like good for it. You know what I mean? It's not just me yelling at my wall when I get in a new game, which no, I totally don't do. Don't worry. I totally don't do that. I'm not crazy. I swear. I'm not crazy. So these were just five things that I personally find annoying or frustrating and that I would consider pet peeves when it comes to gaming. There were several others and I could have made this like a top eight list, but I didn't have enough for 10, which is why I didn't push it over to 10. But yeah, guys, this is just some stuff that personally annoys me when it comes to game collecting but I'm really curious if you're a collector yourself what are some things that annoy you are there any that were on my list that you also think are quite annoying are there any that you think should be added just let me know down in the comments below and yeah guys I know this was a short video it was fun it was quick it's unlike what I usually do but I've been doing a lot of intense videos lately so I thought this would be a nice break from that and a nice way to kind of connect with you other collectors out there so yeah guys thanks a lot for watching I hope you enjoyed and as always, I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir, and today I have a very weird, unusual video for you all about playing games with your Wii U. And so last weekend, I was doing on how to play older or retro consoles on your HDTV in HD. Most recently, I covered the GameCube and the Atari 2600, and now today, finally...